Post tribbers are spiritual harlots. I'm going to prove it from the scriptures today. Okay, not my opinions, not because I'm been corrupted by John Nelson Darby's writings or some kind of foolish nonsense like that. Um, I'm going to show you from the scriptures that I'm right. Okay, and I'm, I know most post tribbers won't make it through. You probably already shut it off. Probably didn't even watch the video, but. We'll just give you the, the benefit of the doubt here. But most of them won't make it through the whole study, won't actually look at the scriptures. So I'm going to tell you what it's about. I'm going to prove to you the point, and then I'm going to show you the scriptures that support my point. Okay, my point is there are two different types of women, spiritual women, described in this King James Bible. You have a harlot, and then you have a chaste virgin. The harlot is a false church. The chaste virgin is the true church of Jesus Christ. Okay, the harlot wants to know the appointed time when her husband leaves and when he's coming back. Why? Because she wants to commit fornication when he's away. She isn't living right, you see. So she doesn't want her husband to just show up at any time because she's doing wicked things, you see. Just like post-tribbers. Every post-tribber I've met has got serious problems. They don't believe in repenting of sins and things like that. Just believe, pray the prayer you're in, and you can continue living like the world, essentially. A good example of that would be post tribber Donnie Romero, a new IFB pastor that was going around and, and going to, he was gambling at casinos using church money and gambling, doing drugs, and fornicating with prostitutes. Finally got caught, and then it was, oh, you know, we have to get this guy out of here. Yeah, but he was preaching the whole post trib thing the whole time, you see. He didn't want to see Jesus Christ show up at any time. You know, I mean, what's he going to be doing, you know, there in, the, in bed with a prostitute at some casino? that he just hired out, and he's doing drugs with her. And uh, come up hither, Donnie Romero. He doesn't want to hear that. You see, he wants to know that the Antichrist has to show up first and then confirm the covenant, and then i got three and a half years before I have to get right, or seven years, or whatever the posties believe. There's so many different varieties of them. That's a spiritual harlot. A chaste virgin, on the other hand, doesn't need to know when her husband's coming back the exact time because she's not going to be living in sin. She's going to be purifying herself, getting ready to see him at any point in time. She's going to be keeping house, doing good things. And she's going to be looking out the windows and saying, I wonder if he's coming today. Oh boy, I'd sure love to see him today. She's going to go to bed at night, look outside. I don't see him yet. Boy, I can't wait to see my husband. You see? You see the difference? Those of us that are looking for the imminent return of Jesus Christ, we're the chaste virgin. Those that are saying, well, we need to see the Antichrist first, and then we have so, many time, so much time before Jesus shows up. Those are harlots, spiritual harlots. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So I'm going to go back to Proverbs chapter 7 now, and I'm going to give you a different uh, sort of a interpretation of the thing. I'm not saying it's the exact one that always has to be this. It's all scriptures given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for reproof, correction, instruction, righteousness, and doctrine, of course, the first one. Let's check this out. I'm going to prove to you from the scriptures, if you believe that you're going to go through this great tribulation, it's not even called that. That's not even a title in the King James Bible. Posties, it, it, it cracked me up. Well, the Bible says in Matthew 24 that you know, immediately after the tribulation period, uh, you're a liar. You just removed Scripture. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. It's a description. It's not a title. Never a title. Never is the word the tribulation or the great tribulation ever given as a title for that time period that's coming. Why is that so important? Because it's for the Jews. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. It's also Daniel's 70th week. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, Israel. The church doesn't need further purification unless you're doing some really wicked things right now. Oh, the Antichrist showed up. Oh, man, okay, honey, you better get going. Jesus is going to be here in three and a half years. Oh, boy, I better get rid of this meth addiction, and I better get rid of the gambling addiction, and I better get rid of this pornography on my computer, and I better get rid of all these other things. I have to be purified. You see? That's why I say post-tribbers are lost. They're looking for events to happen that signal, I have so much time before Jesus Christ shows up. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. Interesting. 7 plus 6 is 13. Number of cursing in the Bible. Hmm. 
For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. post tribbers <laughs> You know, there was no mention of the, of the pre-trib rapture before 1830. Really? Can you show me proof? Where was the post-trib? Post-trib pre-wrath system. Where was it before 1830? Nobody preached it. Well, the church was post-trib before then. Oh, uh, well, the Catholic church was. Is that who you're referring to? Void of understanding. Verse 8, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the, the way to her house. Isn't it interesting that they'll talk about the church being, you know, this is our sister church? Hmm. We, uh, we're on the street corner. We're on the corner of such and such. Our church, you just go down this street, and you know, we're right on the corner there. Churches are never buildings in the King James Bible. They're people. Nothing to it. Verse 9, In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Hmm. Oh, you mean she wore special clothing? Like people that go to church? So, oh, come on, you're stretching. Instruction, righteousness, instruction there, reproof, correction. You see? Verse 11, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Do you ever meet people in Baptist churches? Loud and stubborn. <laughs> now is she without, now on the streets and lieth and wait at every corner. Soul winning crusade. We're going out, we're going to be hitting the streets of such and such. We got a big map of all the streets of the town here and we got to take our highlighter and we got to highlight each street. Did you, did you go down that street there? Okay, we'll have to get that next weekend. We got to get more soul winners out here. We got a crusade to carry out. We got to go down... Hmm. Verse 13. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. I'm a peaceful one. I'm, I, I have, I'm a Christian and everything else. She's trying to catch people. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I'm a soul winner. Would you like to know for sure that you can go to heaven when you die today? Would you be willing to pray this prayer? Just repeat after me. Blah, 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 blah. If I could have just a minute of your time, I can tell you how to get to heaven when you die. And uh, you, this will only take a minute of your time. Just please let me go through the little thing. I, I used to do it, you see. I used to be a Baptist. Verse 16, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. We have a very nice church building. It's got a really nice thing. We just put in new carpet and we have all these things and it's really got to... Yeah. Hmm. Spiritual fornication. Interesting because Revelation 17, we'll go there later, um, talks about this harlot committing spiritual fornication with the kings of the earth. Hmm. Look at verse 19. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Well, if I go to your church there, IFB church there, or uh, is Jesus Christ there? Can I meet him there? Well, no, he's gone on a long journey. He's not there right now. Verse 20, He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Did you know every post-tribber believes that? Jesus Christ can't come back until the Antichrist shows up. Jesus Christ is completely incapable of coming back today or tomorrow. It, you know, it may be at day, you know, uh, morn when the day is awaking, maybe perchance. You know, there's a hymn, I can't think of it right now, um, that Jesus will come. You know, sorry, I'm not thinking of it. But, you know, the point is there's old hymns that talk about it may be at morn, it may be at midday, it may be at perchance, you know, uh, the blackness of midnight, that Jesus will come. You can't believe that if you're post-trib. He's coming at an appointed day, you see. Hmm. Verse 21, With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. You know what the, the average soul winner is? 
They learn how to flatter with their lips. They learn how to have their special little speech. I did a whole video on it showing that they say, this is my speech. This is the one that I use. This, is the, this works for me. It's always worked. It's, it's, I always get these people and th flattering with their lips. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. How many people have church buildings damned to hell down through the centuries? Lord only knows. Don't tell me that every person that's ever walked into the door of, walked through the door of a church and gone in, sat down, and been part of that thing, don't tell me they're all saved. Nobody professes that. Not even the most hardcore church-going Baptist or Catholic or whatever. Nobody says that everybody that's ever entered a church is saved. Hmm. Verse 24, Hearken unto me now therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. I've seen a lot of great men that uh, go off and they get involved in organized religion. And they get effeminate, they, they, they get messed up and everything. They get controlled by the church. And what happens to them? They die and go to hell. Go back to Revelation 17. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The great whore. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scar scarlet collared beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar, collars of the Vatican, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Jump down to verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. These idiots, new IFB idiots, come out and they say, well, it's not a city anymore. It's a country. It's America. Um, no, a city is a city. It's not a country. It's not the Jewish conspiracy or something like this. It's a city. You get into the Jesuits and the Knights of the Equestrian Order and the, the Knights of Malta and, and Knights of Columbus and all these knighthoods and things within Catholicism. Yeah, they reign over the kings of the earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. You say, what's that have to do with going to a Baptist church? Uh, well, you, you start to study the thing and you see that Baptist, you know, baptism and things is, is recognized by the Catholic church as being legitimate. And you see a lot of other things too there. A lot of connections between the Baptists and the Catholics and all the other churches too, by the way. Most of the other churches have actually signed agreements with the Vatican. And you go there and you let them woo you in with their fair speech. And they're almost all post-trib, by the way, too, I should add. Or, or amillennial you know, types of people. They don't even believe that the book of Revelation is literal. Uh, that it will have literal fulfillment. Um, you know, they're going to mess you up. You're going to be part of the whore. You're going to be a harlot spiritually. Let me show you a couple of verses, though, on the thing of uh, what a Christian is looking forward to. Book of Philippians, chapter 3. Show you the difference here between the two. Philippians, chapter 3. Verse 20, for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Just read this in the last study. We're looking for the Savior. We're looking for Jesus Christ. Okay? We're not looking for the Antichrist. Turn in your Bible to the book of Titus. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the Antichrist and the signing of the covenant. So then we know how much time we have. Uh, no, uh, it says, looking for the blessed hope, that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to point out too, by the way, um, that all the passages of 
what would be called the rapture type of passages, we go up to meet Jesus in the air. Yet it says, great God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ there. It's not two different gods that we're going to be meeting. Just one. Two different descriptions of one God. Got to put that in there. Finally, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You have verse 23 through 25 talks about, you know, going over like the what would be used for communion. Look at verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. You see, the chaste virgin that is the church, uh, and the Bible actually calls it the church the chaste virgin. We're not going to go to the scripture there, but you can look that up. Um, the chaste virgin is looking for Jesus Christ to come back. The spiritual harlot doesn't want to see Jesus Christ right now. Like I said before, Donnie Romero of the new IFB, he didn't want to see Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm heading to Vegas this weekend, going to you know, get a little action, a little drugs, going to see if I can make a little bit extra money here with this church, these church funds. Hey, uh, hey Donnie, um, what if Jesus comes back when you're doing that? <laughs> I don't need to worry about that. The Antichrist hasn't showed up yet. We won't be seeing Jesus for another three and a half years after the Antichrist shows up. <laughs> yeah, he's lost. He's lost. Hey, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to pop this video in here that I got you know, from the store or Netflix or whatever. We're going to watch this good Hollywood movie. What if Jesus comes back while you're watching it? Antichrist hasn't showed up yet. I don't got to worry about it. Jesus isn't coming back until the appointed time, you see. He can't just pop in here and uh, ruin our party that we have as post-tribbers. You believe in the pre-trib or catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble? To use the proper biblical you know, terminology there. He can come back today. He can come back at any time. Makes you think, doesn't it? I'm going to go get this bottle of alcohol here. Maybe I'll just kind of tempted to get some and drink a little bit this weekend. What if Jesus comes back? I'm going to just uh, I'm going to take a break here, light up a cigarette. and What if Jesus comes back when I'm smoking this? I'm just going to get on this website here. And nobody's around. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to a little bit of temptation here. I'm going to look at this pornography website. What if Jesus comes back? You see the difference? The spiritual harlot says, he can't come back right now. Don't worry about it. We can go out and we can fornicate with the world. Spiritually, we can have plenty of fornication with them, fellowship with them and things like that. Not a problem. Because Jesus can't come back till certain events happen. But if you're saved, if you're born again, he could come back at any time. So you're going to want to purify yourself. You're going to want to say, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to look at that. I don't want to do that. Why? Because I, Jesus could be here any minute now. But what if he doesn't come back? What are you going to do then? I'm going to be disappointed today, and I'm going to look for him tomorrow. Are you sure you're saved? You post rivers out there? What in the world is worth you not getting saved? Well, I just don't want to give up the movies. Really? <laughs> I don't want to give up this and I don't want to give up that. Rather stupid, aren't you? And I say that with all Christian love and charity too, by the way. Uh, you are rather stupid if you are hanging on to anything in this world out here that's keeping you from getting truly born again. You better think about these things.